Thank you for the opportunity to join you during this extraordinary time. And I would like to thank municipal leaders for the hard work you have put into helping your communities get through this pandemic. I'm recording this speech in Mississauga, home to many indigenous people for thousands of years, including the Anishinaabek, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe Chippewa peoples. It is currently located on the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. And I want to express my gratitude for the teachings of indigenous people as I strive to be a good steward of this place for the next seven generations. By now, these online events have become common, but I can't say that I've gotten used to them. I'd rather be in person with you. AMO meetings are vital to understanding what is happening in communities across Ontario. The formal delegations are essential, but we can't discount the importance of chance encounters in the hallway or on the street. These informal conversations are some of the most informative and valuable, and I will sorely miss them. I want to take a moment to thank the frontline heroes who have provided care and kept essential businesses operating. That includes elected municipal leaders and staff who have been working hard to serve residents during this crisis. The Green Party will continue to work with you and for you, pushing both the federal and provincial governments to provide the support municipalities need. So you can serve residents and continue to build inclusive, vibrant and caring communities. I've been so inspired to see people work so hard to be physically distant and remain socially connected. These last five months have felt like five years. It's not been easy. I remember the first outbreak at the Guelph General Hospital and the fears of not having enough PPE, the fear for essential workers risking their lives to go to work. I will never forget the Friday afternoon when I received a call that the first homeless person in Guelph had tested positive. And by Sunday morning, city staff and social service leaders had found safe places for our most vulnerable to isolate. It was so disturbing to see our communities come to a standstill. Police tape around parks, seniors feeling isolated, people with addictions dying at higher rates, businesses and homeowners unable to pay their property taxes. Yet, you kept vital services alive despite the huge drop in revenues. Thank you, thank you for keeping our vital services going. Transit so nurses and personal support workers could get to work. Waste and recycling collection, shelters, food banks, you did it. No matter what city you are from, we can be proud of how we've handled COVID, especially looking at our neighbors to the south. I'm so proud to be Canadian, proud of the way we have put our political differences aside to work together. Seven months ago, no one could have imagined that MPPs from all parties would grant unanimous consent to quickly pass legislation. We've put public health ahead of the economy, but at the same time, look at how people have rallied to support their favorite local businesses. Both the Premier and the Prime Minister rose to the occasion. Everyone, everyone in this virtual room rose to the occasion. And now is the time to recover and build back a better Ontario. And I want to be clear, there will be no recovery if the province doesn't support municipalities. I've heard you loud and clear. You need financial support. We cannot dig ourselves out of this hole on the property tax base alone. And that's why back in May, I echoed the call of AMO and FCM for urgent financial relief. I want to give a quick shout out to my mayor, Cam Guthrie, who is chair of LUMCO, has been a strong advocate for municipalities. I made 10 recommendations, including among other things, restoring the funding formula for public health and childcare, 
reversing cuts to ambulance services, covering 50% of the operating costs of local transit, doubling your share of gas tax funding. I supported the Premier pushing Ottawa to deliver financial support. But I was also disappointed that he kept passing the buck. We need the Premier to be more than a negotiator and a cheerleader. He too must dig in to provincial pockets to support municipalities. It's a relief that Ontario has seven billion, but there are huge gaps, like affordable housing. Ontario is the only province where responsibility for social housing falls to municipalities. Like public health, the province can't download public health costs when we know a second wave is around the corner. Like infrastructure, we know municipalities don't have the matching funds for their contribution to infrastructure projects. I know budgets are tight, but we cannot cut our way to prosperity. The bottom line is that the province has more fiscal capacity than municipalities do. And we have to use that fiscal capacity to open our communities and get our economy going again while preparing for a second wave. There will be no economic recovery if we don't invest in our schools, lowering class sizes and creating more space for students and staff to return safely. There will be no economic recovery without a workable rent relief program that keeps small businesses alive. And there will be no economic recovery if municipalities don't have the money to provide the essential services that keep our communities open. I want to close today by talking about the Green Party's vision for the post-COVID recovery. We have a once in a generation chance to chart a new path based on some of the lessons learned from this pandemic. The old path was not sustainable and this is our chance to pivot to building a better Ontario. Economic recovery will require historic investments that will shape our economy and communities for generations to come. We have to invest in growing and emerging markets. This means making Ontario a global leader in electrified transportation, taking advantage of our mineral resources and manufacturing might to have a made in Ontario supply chain for electric vehicles and battery storage. We can create thousands of good paying jobs, helping people save money and making businesses more competitive by retrofitting our buildings to make them the most efficient and accessible in the world. We can support Ontario farmers and clean tech innovation by being a global leader in bioproducts. We can attract tech talent from around the world if we declare broadband as an essential service and build out a world-class network to every corner of this province. We can support local businesses by making our neighborhoods and downtowns more attractive destinations with investments in walking and cycling infrastructure to make them people-centered. Canadians are ready for these kinds of jobs Polling shows that 94% of people are in favor of promoting Canadian minerals for clean technology and Canadian forest products for low carbon buildings. 88% support a national network of EV fast charging stations. 91% like the idea of Canada as the world leader in electric buses. Yes, Canadians want to align our economic recovery with climate action. And we owe it to our children and grandchildren to flatten the curve on climate pollution like we've been doing on COVID-19. But it's not just about building a greener Ontario. It's about building a more caring Ontario. This pandemic has shown us that our elders deserve more dignity and respect. We have to completely overhaul the way we care for elders beginning with a commitment to minimum standards of care and responsible staffing ratios in long-term care homes. Our children deserve investments in safe schools. 
We need to rebalance our healthcare system to focus as much on preventing illness as treating it. This means investing in primary home and community care. It also means addressing homelessness, poverty, and racism. The social determinants of health that drive up costs in health care, social services, and justice if we continue to ignore them. We need a housing strategy that ensures everyone has an affordable place to call home. We need to transition CERB to a permanent basic income so no one, no one falls through the cracks when the next emergency hits. We need to turn the conversation about policing into investments in mental health services, harm reduction, and the removal of systemic barriers that harm black, indigenous, and people of color. We need to continue to support frontline workers with decent pay, job security, and benefits. And we need to hold on to our new appreciation for buying local by permanently protecting prime farmland and source water regions. The Premier wants to build back faster by dismantling the rules and regulations that protect the people and places we love. But that approach, that approach fails to learn the lessons of this pandemic. We can't cut corners and ignore science. We've proven in the past five months that government can act quickly to do things that protect people in ways that no one thought were possible. You know, I have two daughters, and I've often talked with them about how they will always remember the historic crisis they've lived through. They can be proud of the way we've all come together to care for each other. And I want them to be proud of how we've recovered from this crisis as well, of how we learn to listen to science and make the big changes we need to secure their future. That, that's the moment we face right now. And I ask you to join me, I ask you to join the Green Party in building a greener and more caring Ontario. Thank you, thank you for the great work you do. Thank you, be safe, be well.